part that has the kids pictures on it and the first item is to elect a moderator for the year ensuing. Are here any nominations? In that minute, I'll turn it over to the chair of the select board. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, are you ready for the question? All those in favor of Paul Gillis as the town school district moderator say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. I haven't heard a no in the back. I'm not sure. <laughs> the ayes have it, and uh, congratulations, Mr. Gillis. Thank you. This is uh, this will be the 228th town meeting. Uh, we didn't have town school district meetings until 1892, so it's the 107th time we're meeting to vote on schools. And we actually didn't have a separate town school district meeting from the town meeting before. Uh, 1988. So it's the 28th uh, separate town school district meeting, and it is likely the last. So it's, it's a historic moment for us as the court seems to have ruled in favor of sustaining Act 46 and Act 49. And uh, with that, uh, we would start with item two on the agenda to hear and act upon the report of the town school directors. In this case, uh, we will be uh, treating the reports that appear in the town report. And if you have questions for the school board, they're up here and ready to answer. I think they have an uh, intention to discuss the budget under Article 7, which we're now allowed to, we are now allowed to vote, even though voting is going on. So if you could concentrate on, but let's let Joy be unrestrained here. Ask any question you want. Uh, but let's just go through the reports first. Uh, the elementary school report from the Board of Directors is pages four and five. Aaron Boyton, the principal's uh, report is six, seven. We have the budget. We have the, then we have the Union School District, the 32 uh, warning. Salaries of employees, the superintendent's report, and uh, the uh, audit of the uh, school district. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, so, Matt, um, I, I think I know the answer to this, but I think it would help all of us. I think we're going to need the amplification, Matt. Sure. And it may not be on, so. Thank you, Matt. There is no U32 budget for you to vote on today. There is a U32 budget that has been built as it is has been in past years. It's typically ready for town meeting. Um, of the five district towns, not everyone chose to go forward with an individual town budget. In Berlin, we decided that we should put an individual budget before you. U32 is prepped and ready to go, but it's not before you for a vote because of the merger and because uh, that board, I believe, I don't want to speak for them, but I believe decided that they would wait um, and have the rolled up single merged budget, which is going to be put before the voters in the coming months. So this does tie into Act 46 and Act 49. Uh, we expect merger to happen because of the ruling in the lawsuit yesterday merger is not going to be put on stay or preliminary injunction. Um, we still have um, legislative action that could possibly halt the merger or at least delay the merger, but that's totally up in the air. So for the U32 budget, 
we have the numbers that can calculate into our estimated tax rate, but we don't have a budget for you to vote on today. You should expect that at a special meeting in the coming months, um, <laughs> either as an individual U32 budget, if the legislature does something, or as a combined merged budget. One board, one budget, if merger goes forward, and we do expect it to go forward. So we're planning on both accounts. Sorry if that's a little bit confusing, but Act 46 is a little bit confusing. I'm happy to try to answer any other questions, but no U32 budget to vote on today. Any other questions on the school reports? Uh, with uh, your consent, I will move Article 3 till following 5, since it's the traditional last article, any other business, and it seems funny to do any other business when we still have business to do. Does anybody have any objections to the order? All right, so let's go to 4. Um, shall the school district authorize the Board of School Directors to hold any audited fund balance as of June 30th, 2019 in a reserve fund to be expended under the control and direction of the Board of School Directors for the purpose of operating the school? Is there anyone who will move this so we may discuss it? Bob, in a second? Whoops. Um, I think if you may recall, we voted this several times in the past and the uh, town uh, has been advised that if you vote against this, that any surplus we have will be returned to the state. But that's not to affect your vote in any way. So <laughs> if you would have uh, anyone to discuss this, anyone want to comment on it, questions? Josh. So this relates back to the, actually somewhat to Chris's comment just a few minutes ago. Um, if the merger goes forward, it sounds like it, it is going to go forward, then the Berlin School District ceases to exist as of June 30th of this year? And if so, what happens to the assets that's in the Berlin School District uh, at that time? My understanding is that should the merger go forward, the Berlin School District will cease to exist on June 30th, and we will have a single unified district consisting of the, the five towns in U32. That includes pooling of all assets and liabilities. So we share debt, uh, we share assets. Um, one of the questions that we've been looking at as we've been going forward is what happens to our reserve funds. You know, different schools have taken different approaches to building up capital funds and things like that. Um, what we've been told, and this is um, nothing that's written in stone and nothing that we can guarantee is that the capital funds that sit with the towns now will stay with those towns and be spent in those towns on those buildings. We've been setting aside, we've been trying to be more responsible about setting aside capital funds for further improvements. Some of you may have noticed a little hole in the driveway on the way in. <laughs> That's something we've been looking at, trying to redo that driveway. So we've been setting aside money every year to try to build that up in order to do it without asking for another bond, without going out for bond and hopefully planning for the future. Some towns are, are doing that better than others. Um, but our understanding is that the reserve funds that we have stay with the towns in a merged district. Any more questions, discussion? Uh, yes. Just for clarification, there is a bill that was passed out of the House that gives us uh, a year's uh, extension. That bill has gone over to the Senate. They haven't taken it up yet, but if they do and they uh, pass the bill as was passed out of the House, we will have a year's extension rather than working like crazy to make the June deadline. So we're hoping that that goes through on the Senate side. Thank you. Anything else on this Article 4? I'll read it again so it's fresh in your mind. Shall the school district authorize the Board of School Directors to hold any audited fund balance as of June 30th, 2019 in a reserve fund to be expended under the control and direction of the Board of School Directors 
for the purpose of operating the school. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. Article 5. Shall the school district authorize the Board of School Directors to borrow money in anticipation of the receipt of revenues for the 2019-2020 school year? Who will move this? Yes, sir. And second? Uh, discussion? Questions? Uh, this is another traditional article, and uh, if you are not going to talk about it, we can vote it. Are you ready for the question? If so, shall the school district authorize the Board of School Directors to borrow money in anticipation of the receipt of revenues for the 2019-2020 school year? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. And it passes. <coughs> we are, uh, have a uh, presentation, I believe, of, of the budget, and I would uh, turn the microphone over to uh, Chris Winters at this time. Thank you. Um, Paul, would it be okay for me to speak to Article 6? Yes, I'm sorry, I probably should have. Oh, uh, I wouldn't endorse a candidate. I'm not going to endorse a candidate. Okay. <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> I'm going to beg for candidates. Um, so this, this is my fourth year on the school board, and my term is up, and I'm not running again. Uh, Vera Frazier is the only one who was duly elected uh, to the school board. Uh, the rest of the folks here are uh, volunteers who filled in for vacancies, and I want to say thank you to them, to Nicole Ferrier, um, Vera who was elected, uh, Peter Schober, and Carl Parton who stepped up and filled vacancies over the last year um, due to resignations. Yeah, thank you very much. And you'll notice on your ballot that there are four openings on the board. So those vacancies, those three vacancies, vacancy appointments plus my ending term means there are four vacancies on the board. We have one candidate running, which means after today, uh, we'll have two members on the school board. And uh, unless there's a write-in candidate, um, we will have three vacancies, which means we won't even have a quorum. So I believe on Thursday night, the select board is going to entertain, the select board has to make that appointment to the vacancy to create a quorum. So on Thursday night, they're gonna entertain folks who are interested in being on the board to create that quorum. Once we have three members, a third member appointed by the select board, then the school board can appoint to those other two vacancies. So bottom line is this, we're looking for volunteers for people to carry this forward. This board still exists through the end of the year, actually, even if we're merged on July 1, there's still business that this board, light business, not the typical monthly business that we have, but light business for this board to take care of all the way through the end of 2019. So this is just my plea to you. If you're interested in a short-term stint on the board, please think about it, and um, we'd love to, to have some applications and some folks to bring forward to the point to those vacancies. Um, so now on to Article 7, if that's okay. The, the budget itself, we have a brief presentation, a 12-minute YouTube video that I'd like to play, and then perhaps that'll answer some of the questions that you might have, and if you have others after that, I'm happy to try to answer them about the budget. Thank you. Assumption that we will be merged 
due to a state order, and that a consolidated budget will be proposed to all voters of the five towns in a few months, and it's possible that this budget and vote will be replaced by that emerged budget. But until then, we as a board believe we have a duty to present the Berlin voters with a local budget because there is a lawsuit and pending legislation that might halt the merger, we felt we needed to go forward as an independent school board as we currently exist and prepare for both tracks. The budget of the merged boards would most likely be the very same budget, but it would just be rolled up as one of five, six county and 32 budgets for a vote in the entire district. Your school board asked for a level service budget this year, maintaining the same level of educational services as the previous year. And we're now asking you to approve that budget that includes, as I said, a net 2.67 increase in spending over last year. I'll talk a little bit here about the budgeting process. The components of the 2019-2020 budget and the tax impacts, which include four factors, including our local budgets, the state tax rate, the property yield, and the common level of appraisal. These are some of the competing pressures when we're determining our budget for the elementary school. There are curriculum decisions, contracts, economic pressures, required student services, educational quality, political pressure, revenue projections, federal mandates and benefits, tax burdens and test scores. These are all some of the things that we take into account when we're developing our budget. In developing our budget, we first got a draft from the principal superintendent and business administrator with staff input. We reviewed multiple budget drafts and gave feedback on what we wanted to see included or not included in the budget. We had multiple meetings in open session at our regular school board meeting to discuss the budget and solicited community input. Eventually we came up with a budget that we all approved and now we move that forward to you, the voters, in hopes of your approval. The proposed budget we have this year is a total of $3,630,000 that's an expense change of 3.4% over last year. We have increased funding due to special education. The net impact on taxes is an increase of 2.67% over last year. Our proposed education spending for equalized people is $17,633. Last year, it was $16,000. That equalized spending change is 4.39% higher than the current year. You'll see on your ballot when you come out to vote the number 4.41% higher than last year's equalized spending per pupil. Those calculations are changing all the time, and this slideshow is based on the most recent information we have from the Agency of Education. But again, that's not 4.41% in spending, in spending per equalized people. Our actual expense change is a net impact of 2.67 increase in spending over last year. These charts show you a little bit more about how we spend our money at Berlin Elementary School. As you can see, a large part of it is direct instruction of students special education. You can see other categories here around operation of the building, the assessments from central office, and administrative costs. You can see on this slide some of the budget change highlights. We have salary increases and benefit changes from negotiated teacher contracts. We have staffing changes also contributed to an increase in expenses. Due to some teachers coming, some teachers going, and depending on the experience of those teachers that we've hired. The 
total for those negotiated items in salary increases, benefits, and staffing is $122,548. That's 3.49% of the budget. That's really most of the increase that we're talking about over expenses from last year. As far as non-salary items go, we've actually cut spending just a little bit at $3,179 less than last year for a total combined of $119,369 or that 3.40% of the budget we talked about in the beginning. We have additional revenues for special education of $25,531 for a net impact on taxes of 2.67% over last year's budget. Student enrollment ended up being level from last year. Again, we don't get those numbers from the Agency of Education until very late in the process. And it really changes each day as children are moving in and out of our town. Our pre K through 12 enrollment is projected to be level over the next five years and has been relatively steady over the last decade. Here's a little table to help put in perspective the spending per equalized pupil in Berlin as compared to the other towns in our supervisory union. You can see the expense change for our proposed budgets and the net tax impact here. Looking at the five towns in our supervisory union, and as you can see, Berlin is at three cents or three dollars for every one hundred thousand dollars of assessed property value. When we look at the tax impact, there are four factors affecting the local tax rate. The common level of appraisal, the statewide education tax, the property yield, and the Berlin Elementary and U32 budgets. We really only have control over the fourth item. The common level of appraisal, or CLA, is an adjustment to the education tax rate to account for the gap between appraised value and actual value of the property. The 2018-2019 CLA for Berlin is 102.14%, which is down just a little bit over last year's 102.45%. This results in a very small tax increase. The statewide tax rate as of February 20th of this year um, is a series of calculations where all the statewide education spending together into a pool and redistributed out to the towns. The legislature comes up with this rate and is subject to negotiation, perhaps veto or approval of the governor. This is some information about those tax rates, and this is one of the factors in determining what our local tax rate is going to be. This slide shows you a little bit about the tax rate impacts for 2019 and 2020 for Berlin and for the other four towns in the supervisory union. As you can see here, the um, residential tax rate is $3 per 100,000 of assessed value, and the non residential tax rate is $5 per 100,000 of assessed value. It's important to note that these rates don't reflect income sensitivity adjustments which are available to most homeowners with incomes less than $136,500 per year. This is a little more information on income sensitivity. 57% of Berlin residents receive support for their property taxes from the income sensitivity. So we won't see the same tax rate of uh, $3 per $100,000 of assessed value. 43% of the Berlin residents will pay full tax rate. Here's a little bit more information on property tax adjustments, just showing uh, how many folks in Florida have that income sensitivity adjustment rate and how many do not. In summary, the Berlin Elementary Board is proposing a budget of $3,630,287. That budget is a 3.4% increase over last year's expense budget. When you include special education revenues, this amounts to a net impact on taxes of two. 0.67%. Passing both the Berlin Elementary School and the U32 budgets will result in a 0.3 cent increase in the local homestead tax rate, 
That translates to an increase of $3 per 100,000 of assessed value. Our tax rate is projected to increase in part due to the change in the common level of appraisal and the statewide education tax formula, along with what we've chosen to spend on the local budget. We think this is a responsible budget balancing fiscal constraint with student needs, and we ask you for your support. A public hearing will be held at the Berlin Elementary School on Monday, March 4th at 6 p.m. to provide information to be voted by an Australian ballot at town meeting. Anyone with questions can contact me, Chris Winters, through the Berlin Elementary website. You'll also see some posts on front porch before I think about this. If you're not registered to vote, please do. You can contact the Secretary of State's office through their website and register online. You can go to your town clerk and register there. You can even register to vote on the same day that you come in for town meeting. Thank you for your support, and we hope to see you at the polls. Are there any questions that, about the school budget as a result of the uh, film or anything else? Yes, sir. district ceases to exist, so any budget passed by it and the voters of the town um, has no legal standing anymore. So we will have to have a special meeting and special election to vote on the merged budgets. Um, and it would subsume, would replace whatever we do here today. But what we're doing here today is hopefully to put something in place in case merger doesn't happen. Um, and then just to reiterate something I said earlier, which was that our expectation is that this budget is the one that gets rolled up into the merged budget. There won't be any more jiggering with the, all of the town's budgets. They've all basically set their budgets in place and are just going to roll them up into one. So when you vote on a, a special election for the merged budget, you should see the same numbers that you're seeing today from Berlin. Um, with respect to salaries and benefits and contracts and all of those things, um, I, don't, I don't know that I, I don't feel qualified to answer what kind of effect it's going to have. Um, we'll be one district and have one set of contracts, from my understanding, one set of uh, negotiations. And we do that to some extent already. Um, so I'm not real sure what the impact will be after merger on those teacher contracts. But um, you know, there is some uncertainty right now uh, because we, don't, we aren't sure we're going to have a budget in place for each of the five towns and for U32. There's some uncertainty right now about how we go about uh, dealing with those teacher contracts. So it's, uh, it's messy. It's, uh, you all have figured out. So will there be an averaging of the taxes? Because I noticed that our taxes are going up at a different rate from other towns. Will those all be averaged together at that point? So again, kind of a kind of a difficult question, but as one district. Um, and one budget, uh, I think, will, will depend on how many 
students you have, per equal, equalized pupils you have in your town. That's again the, the agency of education calculation, I believe. Um, so, you know, when you look at the tax rates post merger, uh, the, the projections that I've seen so far would show East Montpelier's taxes going down some, uh, Berlin's going up slightly, Middlesex going up. I think a small amount, and Worcester and Callis going up a little more significantly than, than some of the other towns. A lot of this is a function of the debt carried by those towns. We know East Montpelier has a, a sizable debt. Berlin and um, Middlesex have uh, recent bonds as well, so um, some debt. Callis and Worcester have very little debt. And there's also the factor of how much those towns choose to spend on uh, things like educational services. So it's not just that, it's how much they choose to spend in their schools as well. Uh, so all of those things will be pulled together and we'll all be responsible for that one budget across the, the five towns. I'm, I'm sure that didn't quite answer your question, but that's the best I can do. <laughs> Anything else on the budget? Uh, the last item is actually the third item. I remember I've it out of order. It's to transact any other business that may legally come before the meeting. Can't vote binding articles, but if you have something to say, let it out. Josh. Sounds like a vote of approbation for what he said. And if you are comfortable with that, yeah. we let it lie there, or we could call for a formal vote. All right. Fine. Anybody else have anything to say? I think we could all agree that there's. Yes? Carl. Uh, I'm standing before you with a bit of a heavy heart as somebody who uh, I believe has fought injustice since 2015, the injustice of Act 46, for a lot of reasons. Certainly uh, one of the reasons is because I care about my neighbors. Um, not just my neighbors in Berlin, who I don't think should have to pay debt that they did not vote for from other communities within the district, but also for my neighbors in Callis and my neighbors in Worcester who have small schools. Act 46, the purpose, unstated purpose of Act 46, is to close small schools in the state of Vermont without our um, elected representatives getting the political blood on their hands. So make no mistake, Act 46 has a lot of stated goals, but one of them is to close small schools and uh, make it um, the kind of political capital of the elected school board. So at some point, Worcester and Callis are going to come before that newly forced merged board and uh, the money's not gonna be there. They're going to have to find a savings. 
and that savings is going to be closing those small schools. So that was the purpose of Act 46, under not written, but certainly underlying. So I fought against Act 46 for that reason. But also, um, here in Berlin, I care about my neighbors who have invested in this school, their time, their effort, their volunteer hours, and their tax money. Uh, this, this school, this building, this property was donated to the town of Berlin uh, to, to have a school on. And likely, it will have a school because of our uh, geographic proximity to the other five districts. They're not going to really send, uh, close Berlin to send kids to those other five districts. But this property will be sold to the new unified district, and under the law, it's going to be for one dollar, I guess. Um, that still is indirectly in our control, but less directly because we'll have less oversight, less community input, and uh, less say in what happens to this building. Um, so I guess if I wanted to speak out and ask you to do something and take action, I would like you to contact your senators. It's vital right now that we talk, uh, contact other senators throughout the state, but certainly the three senators from Washington County, and let them know you would like the one-year delay, because there are things that we may be able to do as a town to protect our asset, this school. Um, you know, we've discussed a lot of them. It could be something um, like turning over the land surrounding the Berlin Elementary School to the town of Berlin. Uh, I, I suggested other things such as leasing the school and the property to the newly unified district, but we need time to do that. Um, so I suggest you and I, I beg you to contact your senators and let them know that we as a community support the one-year delay that the legislation that's in front of them right now that they're considering that the House has already passed. You know, we can do something fast, which Act 46 did, or we can do something right. And that extra year may give us the opportunity as a town and a community to do this right. Thank you. Anything else under Article 3 for other business? If not, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn the town school district meeting. Whips and second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. You are adjourned. We'll take a five-minute break so that the boards can change and you can flip over your book and return to page two for the town warning below the line. And the first article is to elect the town moderator for the year ensuing. Are there any nominations? Bob. Any second? Uh, I will turn it over to our chair. Okay, any other nominations? Of Hearing none, call the question. All those in favor of Paul Gillis as moderator say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't know if it's uh, in your. Uh, if you would agree, but we have our representatives from the legislature here. If we could take them out of order, would anyone have any objection to hearing from Ann Donahue and, and uh, Ken Dawson? Ann? Hi, good morning. Uh, we, we lucked out now. Um, it used to be that I was like having to juggle and be at Northfield and then rush over here, and one time even you guys had finished by the time I got here. But Northfield is on a three-year experiment doing uh, town meeting on Monday night. So it's great because I get to spend the whole time here and listen to concerns that come up. And also, of course, I usually stay for lunch anyway. So feel free to come and ask about things and so forth. Um, Ken and I both did vote for the delay um, for uh, Act 46. You know, to me, it didn't even matter whether Act 46 was, you know, going to succeed constitutional challenge or whatever. The point is, decision in November, that's not fair to expect people to have to put together a whole new district and work all those articles of agreement out and make them fair in the amount of time. So 
Um, I hope that the Senate passes that bill that we passed, and I think it was good advice to say, call your senators, uh, call your three senators, because um, they're, they're looking to hear for input, and it will be important. Um, there isn't a lot happening yet in the legislature, I think in part because there were so, so many new members this cycle. Um, so a lot of committees um, are, are new, are, had to spend a lot of time just learning the issues and getting up to speed. I, I'm on the health care committee. Um, the chair and I are the only two members of that 11 member committee who uh, have been there more than one prior term. The rest of our committee, uh, four other members, um, it's only their second time, their second time around on the health care committee, and we have five members, brand new legislative members. So we need to spend a lot of time um, hearing Healthcare is a complicated topic, obviously. Um, but there are uh, the um, Family uh, Leave, Paid Family Leave Act um, is active in the House. It's not out of committee yet, but it's active. And the Senate has sent over to the House uh, a minimum wage increase bill, the Tax and Regulate Marijuana Bill, um, increasing the smoking age to 18, um, and a couple other major bills. So we did put out, um, Ken and I put out a, a survey that you'll find uh, on some of those issues that we expect to see coming up so that we have input from you um, that way and obviously also uh, talking today. Um, that's, yeah, yeah, that, so that's, those are the major issues and um, in terms of what's coming up for, for voting. Um, so, Questions and so forth are really welcome. Your input's welcome. And I'll turn it over to Ken to introduce himself. So, hi, I'm Ken Goslein. I am your newly appointed uh, representative. I appreciate your support and uh, your trust for me to do the job. Uh, and is well schooled down there. I'm on the learning curve. I kind of uh, put it to, uh, I mean, an experience like I went right to college and I never went to high school. Um, it's just mind-boggling, and I take things very serious, and I really want to do a good job for uh, everybody. Um, I mean, it's not just uh, Northfield and Berlin, it's the whole state, what we're trying to do. And there's a lot to it. Uh, last night when I got the news on Act 46, I mean, I, I fell asleep with my phone just looking to try to see all the different stuff that was going on. So, so hopefully better prepare myself for here, although I, I, I kind of knew what was going to happen here. But, um, I don't want to take up a lot of your time here now. You have a meeting, but I am going to be around. I'd love to meet, uh, meet people, and uh, I really appreciate your uh, support and uh, want to get to know you and enjoy your meeting. Thank you. I'm on, uh, I'm on judiciary. He's <laughs> on a big power committee which is a bunch of lawyers and, and uh, public defenders and uh, uh, all that good stuff, and uh, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now Article 26, to hear the reports of the town officers for 2018 is where I go through the report. and. Hope to simulate questions and ideas, and the town manager and the board are here willing and able to uh, answer them. So, uh, as we go through, we have the minutes last year, we have the select board report at pages 9 and 10. We have the budget, uh, and then we have the audit, and that takes us to page 71, the assessor's report. Remember, we used to have listers, now we have an assessor. And the annual report of the town clerk, list of those who were born, those who passed away, uh, the delinquent tax list, public works board, board of civil authority and board of abatement, highway department, zoning administrator, planning commission, Police Department, Cemetery Commission, Conservation Committee and Recreation Board, 
Development Review Board, and Emergency Management Team, and then the Fire Department. And after that, there are reports of of the people you are voting on the uh, uh, funds for their uh, charities. So uh, I didn't hear I, I, if I overlooked someone who wanted to ask a question. Raise your hand again. We'll go on to the next article. Then. Uh, article 27, shall the town collect its real and personal property taxes to defray the expenses of the town for the period July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020 in installments, one-fourth of the taxes to be due by delivery or by U.S. Postal Service postmark, no private postal meter postmarks, on or before August 15th, 2019, one-fourth of the taxes due on or before November 15th, 2019, one-fourth of the taxes due on or before February 15th, 2020, and one-fourth due on or before May 15th, 2020, with an 8% penalty and a 1% interest per month, or a portion thereof to be charged for late payment of any installment. Who will move this so we may discuss it? Bob and Wibbs. What would you like to know about this article, or what would you like to say about it? Any comments, questions? Anything this board wants to say about it? Are we in mourning for the school district? <laughs> if you are ready for the question, I will, you'll have to hear me read it again, and we'll go to a vote then. Shall the town collect its real and personal property taxes to defray the expenses of the town for the period July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020 in installments? One fourth of the taxes to be due by delivery or by U.S. Postal Service postmark, no private postal meter postmarks, on or before August 15th, 2019. One fourth of the taxes due on or before November 15th, 2019. One fourth of the taxes due on or before February 15th, 2020, and one fourth due on or before May 15th, 2020, with an 8% penalty and a 1% interest per month or a portion thereof to be charged for late payment of any installment. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The article passes. This leaves us the last item of business as with the school district to discuss any other business that may legally come before this meeting. This is your chance to say anything, or comment on anything, or question anything. Yes, sir. Come right up to the microphone. Introduce yourself. I promise this will be quick. My name is Guy Page, and I'm a volunteer at the local library. Uh, and I just want to say thank you for those who, who have supported it. Um, one of the things that people don't realize about this library is that Folks who are trying to put together job resumes, who are looking for jobs, uh, the library is, a, is a, a very valuable asset. It's, it's an asset, it's a link to the internet that they otherwise might not have. And the internet is how you get jobs these days. So uh, just want to thank you very much for, for your support. Guy, are you a resident? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, yes, I'm a Berlin good, resident. Good, good. I, I never did do the, uh, if just in case somebody here isn't a resident and wants to speak, I'm assuming no one has any objection. Um, someone else? Yes, please come up. Solutions and resolving to find solutions to climate change. 
Good morning, my name is Phil Gentilly. I'm on the Conservation Commission. And out in the lobby, we, uh, out in the lobby, we have a little signboard about the commission, and we are presently seeking new members. Uh, it seems like through attrition and retirement, we're finding it harder and harder to get people to participate. We meet four to six times a year, and you, instead of listing them all, you can see on the board what we've done in the past, what we'd like to do in the future. What we're really interested in is getting some young blood on board. And as I look around the room here, I think I estimated there are about six people under 60. And it's, it's a sad thing because it's hard to get young people involved in face-to-face -face time. So if you know of any young people in Berlin, or if you yourself, I think we're down to four members. We'd like to have six, seven. So please spread the word. And information is right in the lobby. I think I left a sign-up sheet there, but that does, that's not very effective. And if you have any ideas other than front porch forum and coming to town meetings, please let us know. But uh, once again, we're looking for members. Thank you. Mike. Good morning. I am Mike Stragsberg, and it uh, looks like we have a little bit of time before lunch. So I'm hoping you don't mind indulging me for a couple minutes to uh, share some memories of, of town meetings past. Um, my very first memory of, of town meeting was 1976. Uh, I was a student here at Berlin Elementary School. I think I was in sixth grade, maybe fifth grade, but, but sixth grade. And so my parents uh, trundled me and my two brothers and two sisters up and, uh, and brought us up here to the school. Uh, they packed for a day trip. Uh, smartly to do so because you know this town meeting was a little different than you you did spend the day. Um, so I recently had a copy of the warning and the and the uh, minutes from 1976. I'd just like to take a couple minutes and, and share uh, some of the interesting tidbits from uh, that first town meeting that I attended. The uh, the agenda was quite different back then because of course. Um, most of the items were discussed on the floor. There's only a few items that were uh, Australian ballot. Um, and some of the uh, agenda items were quite specific. Uh, this was one of my favorites on that particular day. Article 16, will the voters of the town authorize the selectmen to have a street light installed on the power pole across from Edward Hartman Drive? Very specific. Um, so the meeting, as is tradition, came to order at 10 o'clock. Um, moderator was elected followed by a 15 minute recess. Um, and then they started right in at 10.30 with Article 2, uh, which is a similar article, it's to act, and you know, hear and act on the, uh, the, the town select board uh, reports. That was very, very different than what we just did today. We took about two minutes, you know, to, to zip through when there were no questions. Uh, back then, each report by each committee and each department was discussed and sometimes amended um, before it was voted on and finalized. Um, and so we see the word considerable discussion in the, in the uh, uh, minutes over and over again. Um, there was considerable discussion about highway funds and which roads they were spent on. There was considerable discussion about things like the uh, delinquent sewer report and why someone's $140 item was on there when they should have been abated. And, and that was actually amended, voted on, and changed in the town report on that day. Um, that process took all morning. It took them all the way to lunch to go through the reports of the, uh, of the directors. They had lunch, reconvened at 1.15, and then they started on the budgets. And the budgets were indeed a discussion. You know, they, they talked about it. The, uh, the school budget, interestingly enough, um, there was a proposal made to increase the school budget to $460,000. The proposal had been for four hundred and eleven. dollars uh, After the discussion, that was withdrawn. They didn't actually vote on it. Um, through that discussion, though, we learned that there were 316 students here in the school, 100 more than they are today. I didn't even count preschool, because we didn't have preschool back then. And uh, 222 at the, uh, at the high school. Um, after all that considerable discussion, uh, a final budget was adopted of $396,000, a little less than had been proposed. 
Uh, at some point in the afternoon, they finally got to that Article 16 <laughs> that I mentioned about the street light, and they had more considerable discussion. And in fact, um, a Dr. Burns made a motion that when town funds are being spent to the benefit of an individual, that individual should be announced in the warning. Um, unfortunately, no one seconded his motion, so uh, that was passed over. Uh, and eventually, the, uh, the, uh, the article did fail. They did consult the uh, street light at that uh, location. Five o'clock, the ballot boxes closed, but that was not the end of the meeting. The town meeting was still going on. In fact, after that time, they got to Article 23, at which point the Zoning Board of Adjustment was abolished in favor of a new planning commission. Uh, there was considerable discussion about whether the members of that commission should be appointed or elected by the voters. That amendment eventually failed, and so they are appointed and not elected. The meeting finally adjourned at 7.40 p.m. Yeah. Um, so that was the point my you know, family gathered up our belongings and drove home in the dark from the town meeting. Um, so that, my friends, is a, is a real town meeting. Um, and that's that's the, the way I remember it. Uh, unfortunately, with the ruling yesterday, uh, it looks very likely that Act 46 is going to go forward. We're no longer going to have a, uh, a local school board. We're just going to have a couple of members representing us on a, on a district board. Uh, our budget, instead of being home-baked right here in this room, is essentially going to be a slice of someone else's pie. Um, and that's what we'll get. Um, and the you know, town business, we're, we're not going to discuss where a streetlight goes or any other details like that. You know, we've grown to the point where those decisions are made in committees, they're made by boards. Um, they're, they're done, and they're essentially a proxy by people that we elect. So there's really not much to do here anymore. Um, so I, I think it's likely this may be my last town meeting. Um, there's you know, always been a red circle on the second uh, Tuesday in March, and everybody in my office knows, well, Mike isn't going to be here on that day. He's always at town meeting. The next day I may go to work, or next year, I'm sorry, I may go to work. Uh, I'll show up and go to the polls like most do. Uh, but I have to tell you, I'm, I'm really going to miss a real town meeting. Thank you. That sounds like a coda, but Paul. Uh, quite a few years ago, we uh, started the fund for the recreation board and was like that, walking that down the railroad. And uh, I haven't heard or seen anything about it for quite a long time. This, this fund, which Peggy and I um, put some money into. And I'm wondering if, um, if there is stuff going on. I'm kind of interested in, in uh, doing some improvement trails up to Irish Hill, possibly building a tower of trees. So Yes, Paul, there are two funds, uh, one being the recreation fund and the other being for the, the bike path. Um, the recreation fund has been active, and in fact, they just purchased a new snowblower out of that fund um, for the hockey rink. So that fund has been very handy for uh, recreational purposes. Also, um, they have provided for swim lessons for young children in the summer months. Um, the bike path, about 18 months ago or so, um, the town donated a certain amount of money, and I, $3,000? $3,000, I'm sorry, don't hold me on that, um, for the Vermont cross-country bike trail that's going through a portion of Berlin. So, I hope I've answered your question. In the annual report on page 59, you can actually see the current balances of both the uh, Recreation and Parks Fund the, uh, as, as a non-major fund towards the bottom and the Bike Path Fund. You can see those amounts on page 59. Anything else? 
Jeremy. You, you want to go first, Joe? Say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Thank you. 